I have asked Pat to introduce Kathy. They are in the same uh, club. And so Pat, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, well, both Marty and I could say uh, accolades about Kathy for the next week and it wouldn't cover everything of her capabilities um, and ideas and thoughts. So anyway, Kathy is a past president of the Sacramento Club and then she became membership chair and then now she's publicity chair and she's taking our publicity um, chair in a completely different direction than any of the other previous people have done and is actually very, very busy at it. <laughs> so, and she's very creative and, and in, her, in her thought process about how, how can we make Friendship Force more visible to uh, not just other Friendship Force clubs, but to the communities at large and to other organizations so that maybe then we can enlarge our clubs from that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kathy and she'll give you her down and dirty quick presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Those uh -huh. are very, very kind words. So I like making connections and I like being creative. So I appreciate everyone letting me um, share this morning. So what I've got is, um, let's see. How about that? Can you see? Yeah, that's fine. All right, good. So I'm going to talk predominantly about a partnership. It's under the publicity um, category, but a community partnership that has been evolving really, really for quite some time, a little bit before me, but I think that I've really very rapidly accelerated that. So um, to, in today's presentation, I'll talk about partnering with other community organizations how I have expanded the partnership using a platform called Eventbrite, tried to increase Friendship Force awareness with YouTube, leveraging Facebook, both your, if you have a club Facebook member group and individual members Facebook pages, just some key metrics and, and sharing some good news. And then the goal, of course, is gaining members by sharing these uh, events publicly through Facebook and um, using the Friendship Force International video. Well, how did all this start? Well, last year, as you remember, very quickly, our club went 100% virtual late March. So we were very aggressive. We're lucky we have some very tech savvy people on, uh, on our board. And so they got us up to speed the end of March. And we, we have not looked back since. So a Renaissance member, which is the key partner group I'm gonna be talking about, I knew her from, I'm a member of both Renaissance and Friendship Force of Sacramento. I had reached out to her once we were virtual and I said, hey, would you do, she does a ton of history presentations. I said, could you do a presentation for Friendship Force on the Sacramento Jazz Club history? So she did. And then I had presented a brain health class that I originally gave for Friendship Force of Sacramento last year. My friend that did the jazz class saw my Friendship Force brain health class, asked me to present to Renaissance, same class. And we both said, and then I recruited this individual and she joined last year, she joined Friendship Force. Um, so we both saw value, value exposure and synergy in this experience. Uh, one of those being, I don't want to give the same presentation twice, but um, it's much, much bigger than that. Well, why a partnership? These two groups have very similar missions. We have the same demographic over 50 years, predominantly over 60. 
we share some members, both of the organizations value service to our community. We are both looking to promote our organizations. And over the years, our Friendship Force members that are also Renaissance members have given Renaissance programs routinely. They're typically related to travel or cross-cultural experiences. We, in the past, pre-COVID, we were on campus, on university. So our audience size might be 25 to 40, just to give you an idea. Well, we can see that we are actually much better together when we work together. This is very similar to a slide that I share when we co-host a presentation. I talk about Renaissance. So just so you know, it's a lifelong learning um, and community engagement program for adults. It's through our local university. Now their group is significantly much larger than our club, 1,800 to 3,000 members. If we didn't recruit anywhere else and just recruited out of Renaissance, we would have a fabulous pool. Their attrition rate is about 25% a year. And ours, this is what I say about Friendship Force, we, our club typically has between 114 and 130 members. When I do the slide, I don't put the membership numbers up there, but I wanted you to know. So we started doing these, you know, sharing presentations last fall and then uh, last spring. And the more I kind of got into it, I thought, you know what, I really would like to open this up. The um, renaissance programs that we were doing were open to the community but you had to know about it i mean how do you how do you tell people about it well so i learned about eventbrite um i had used it to register for events but i had never hosted on eventbrite um, it's an online registration platform that can be opened up to the public or you can limit it to just whoever has the invitation link. I choose not to do that because my goal is get as many people exposed to both organizations as possible. With Eventbrite, you have the ability to provide very detailed host or organization information. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, an organizer, in this case, it's Renaissance and Friendship Force of Sacramento, because we co-host, that organizer can be followed by a participant. And then Eventbrite will send out periodic, oh, did you know you're, you're uh, you know, they, they put a new event on Eventbrite. You know, you might want to check it out. All the events that I post, I include links to both Renaissance and Friendship Force websites. I do our local website. I also do international. The reminder email is very easy to automate. Data reports are very simple. It's a much broader audience and it has evolved quite significantly since I started in early February. And it's only May and I've already changed things probably 10 times. So now I'm using the FFI video. Okay, this is a detailed slide, but here's what I want you to get from it. This is on Eventbrite. I just want you to see, um, and the link to the PDF uh, Allison put in the chat. So you can put whatever bio you want. So if people want to find out more about the organization, you can. So you can see I've got Renaissance, blah, blah, blah. Friendship Force of Sacramento, blah, blah, blah. And then just a little bit about both organizations. So the key takeaway on that slide is you can provide as much detail as you want about your organization for people who wanna just check out, well, who is this and why are they offering a free class? This particular slide shows you for an individual event. So I can, again, put very specific information about the event. This is when I, I explained how to make truffles using a mold 
And so I have some detail about the specific event, you know, oh, if you need supplies, I include that, whatever I want. But I also always put, learn more about Renaissance here, learn more about Friendship Force Sacramento here. So I'm constantly reinforcing and putting those links out. That's how I'm trying to um, leverage the, the Eventbrite. Let me just briefly talk about YouTube channels. So our club started our own YouTube channel three years ago. We currently have 24 subscribers and we've got 28 videos. Renaissance Cafe, which is like this, the smaller piece of Renaissance. This is not all of Ren Renaissance. It's a very small piece of Renaissance that where they open it up to the public and that's under Renaissance Cafe. So Renaissance Cafe started a YouTube channel November of December of last year. They have 87 subscribers growing every week. They have 64 videos as of yesterday. So some of the partnership events that I coordinated that were open to both organizations and the public through Eventbrite, or I've listed them here, that's not important, but um, the, the idea is I do it, whatever I'm gonna do in less than an hour, and I focus on how to how to do something. So those are some of the things that, that uh, we did this, this past semester. So it was eight programs under bits and pieces, which is just one category. Then I was co-hosting a number of other events open to the public. And because I started promoting Friendship Force in these eight bits and pieces classes, I was asked to promote Friendship Force in like an additional nine. The first one completely took me off guard. I wasn't prepared to do it, but now I'm prepared to do it. So I tend to you know, <laughs> talk briefly about the organization and then invite them to our next general meeting if we have a speaker, because those are open to the club. Both organizations, Renaissance Cafe and Friendship Force of Sacramento, this past spring, we shared speakers. Now, those of you might recognize the kaleidoscope, um, the kaleido kaleidoscope presentation. FFI had a member out of Boston do a virtual event last fall. So I reached out to her and I said, that was awesome. Can you do it for a lifelong learning group that I'm a part of? And she agreed to do it for Renaissance. Um, our Renaissance group had a great speaker about Art Deco in Sacramento last fall. So I reached out to him and I said, will you do the same presentation for Friendship Force? Because we love to learn about our community. So both of them did that. So we had some terrific shared speakers. And then we invite the um, Renaissance members to, like I said, our general meeting where we have speakers. And so far, and we open this to FFI as well, but travel for genealogy, hiking in Bavaria, and then this coming Sunday, we're doing exploring the greater Sacramento area from like the San Francisco Bay Area up to Reno. We have almost from the very beginning opened up our Friendship for Sacramento general meetings to FFI. So I work with Allison or Britton, get it posted on the FFI virtual events. And so we try to include, you know, FFI members from wherever, if we have a speaker, and we've done numerous speakers. We just began using Eventbrite registration beginning of February 2021. Well, what happens when you use Eventbrite? Well, here's some really cool things. Number one, it's intergenerational. 
um, including children, especially the things like my art related stuff, I get kids with their parents. We get participants from across the USA. We get global participants. And what's I thought we would just get global participants because I posted on the FFI virtual website. That is not the case. Eventbrite is global. So I get global participants, like my Ireland um, participants got it from Eventbrite. And how do I know that? I'll show you later on. I ask them when they register how they heard, mm -hmm. out, how they heard about it. So that's how I know they're from Eventbrite. Plus, when we're chatting, they'll they'll share. So I've seen I've had participants show interest in both organizations. One of the one of our plans is to redesign our membership registration to capture any referral rate from a Zoom virtual event. We don't currently have that because it's so new. Well, let me leave Zoom for a second and talk about how, what do I mean by leveraging Facebook? So we've got a Facebook group page, Friendship Force of Sacramento. If you're not a current mem uh, part of the group, just, you know, go search Friendship Force of Sacramento and ask to join. It's an open group. We do ask you to answer the questions. So what I do, this is my strategy. I didn't do it until recently. I'll post something, <clears throat> excuse me, on our Friendship Force Facebook group. Now, because it's open, it's not a closed group. I can share from our Facebook group to other groups. So that's what I share to the Renaissance Facebook group, which happens to be a closed group, but there's almost 600 members. So if we're going to do a, uh, you know, invite them to a meeting, I've already communicated it in the Renaissance weekly email to all 1800 members, but I also post on our Facebook page, share it to their Facebook page, and then I share to other Facebook group pages as appropriate. So for example, the Art Deco presentation I shared with an art group that I am a member of. Local history programs were shared on several local volunteer Facebook group pages. Um, a link to that can easily be incorporated if people have newsletters. So lots of ways to share that invite that I don't think we've taken advantage of. So here's an, um, an example of how I'm trying to model for other Friendship Force Clubs what I just explained to you. So you can see here towards the right here, this is the truffle one. Originally posted to Friendship Force of Sacramento, right? Then I wanted to share to the Friendship Force International Members Group, hey, guess what? You know, this is what we're doing. We teamed up with the local lifelong learning group and I'm using Eventbrite for registration. People all over the globe can join. And, you know, both organizations are highlighted. Click below to watch a recording of how to make chuffles and see how I'm promoting Friendship Force. This particular time we had US, India, and the UK on that post, but I'm, um, I'm trying to just model that for other clubs. And I've had several uh, Friendship Force International members reach out to me with questions and asking for help in some areas. Another very busy slide, but there's a few key takeaways because this is important. This shows you the visibility. Okay, I've got a lot of like little abbreviations here, but look at my watercolor event. That was the first one I did early February. I had 150 people register on Eventbrite to, to watch it. Now, did everybody show up? No, nobody shows up to any of these virtual events. So that one had about a 48% attendance, but look at this number. This is event bright views. How many people looked at it? 
they they didn't all register, but they looked at it. Not almost 950. I'd never get that kind of visibility. I don't care if you put it in the newspaper, a local, you know, uh, community paper. That's a lot of views, and it costs nothing but my time. Okay, so how many YouTube views have I had? Because we record it and then it gets uploaded to YouTube. 144. That's pretty good. Uh, the question marks are under my referral source because it didn't occur to me to identify where they heard about the, um, the event. But since then, all of my other, these aren't all of them. This is just a few of the events. Um, I record on the Eventbrite, where did they, how did they find out about it? So Renaissance, as you can see, is a very strong promoter. FF is they heard about it through Friendship Force because anybody that's not a Friendship Force Sacramento member, if you're with another club, I'm going to direct you to our Eventbrite because we are, we, our website was getting too many non-members data in there and then we had to clean it up. So it's just, it's much cleaner if we go through Eventbrite and FRND is a friend told them. And then here is Eventbrite pushed the um, event out. They, if, you, if you basically register with them and tell them what your interests are, they'll send you a weekly email with different, oh, you might be interested in this. So you can see I've got some pretty good referrals just from Eventbrite. Okay, so lots, very good visibility. So what, what other good news? Well, I already told you that the Renaissance member who, oh no, this is a different person. Once I gave the brain health class um, last fall, she joined just, and I did, I mentioned it in passing. Jackie, I talked about how I went to or Northeast Ohio. We did a fabulous journey. I had all this great health stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was not even a minute and a half promo about Friendship Force. This gal joined. Um, this shocked me. It didn't occur to me. I thought I might get member referrals from Sacramento, well, because Eventbrite is not only national, it's international. There was a participant on the watercolor event and she was really excited about Friendship Force, reached out to, I think it was Allison and said, is there a Friendship Force near me? Near me? And there, what, there is. So now I also include in the links you know, that I put on Eventbrite, Friendship Force International website. So it's more, even though you can get to that from our website, the FFI one is just more direct. I've had two Renaissance members ask to join our Facebook group. So they're checking us out. That's fine. Um, last year, I recruited two Renaissance members to join Friendship Force in Sacramento because we were still very active with all of our virtual events. Right now, I have two Renaissance couples that are very interested in joining this year. I've got one of them will be watching the presentation on Sunday. She wants me to come over for coffee after that. I think they're going to join. I've had a very detailed conversation with them. And the other couple, he's, he's involved in leadership with Renaissance. But by the end of the year, that will be uh, done. And he goes, I'm joining as soon as my responsibilities um, have diminished a little. So if you have a space, a place to list all of these partner events, that is very, very helpful because then you can refer people to, for a list of all of our upcoming events, go here. They can certainly follow you, but um, for people who don't want to like register on Eventbrite and just want to see what, well, what do you have coming up? We have a blog page through Renaissance where we list our upcoming events. 
Um, so that is something that's very easy to post in other organizations' newsletters if they let you do that. So I, you know, we always invite not only our club, but FFI members globally. The Harris Center Volunteer Group, that's a, a performing art volunteer group. Capital Volunteers, where we did some history. I think that was the Art Deco one. Uh, we've invited retired Peace Corps volunteers to some of our events that we feel like they might be interested in. We've also told both organizations about this list of upcoming free events. And I mean, I, there's so, I have so many ideas about other people. I just haven't had time to reach out to them. I think retired teachers would be great, service clubs, historical societies. I've done a little bit of reaching out there. So where are we headed with this? Um, continue to connect with more community partners. I still have more to learn. Um, it, it would be good, I think, I wouldn't consider, I don't consider myself very tech savvy, but um, like I don't edit any of our, our um, videos to me. I don't want to get into that, but like we do have Chris, who's very tech savvy and he, he edits like our, our friendship force of Sacramento um, videos. He uploads those to our YouTube channel. So that helps. I think, I, I, this came up about maybe six weeks ago, the idea of, you know, we don't want people to think that, honestly, we don't want them to think, well, you know, you can just watch Friendship Force online and you never have to be a member. It's like, okay, we need to, to do a better job of promoting membership benefits. And that's when I started to do some more research on the FFI website, found those terrific three FFI videos that talk about Friendship Force International. They're under three minutes. Two of them are around two minutes. They're excellent. So now we use those. And, and how do we use it? Well, this Sunday, and we did it last, last year, uh, meeting too, we started our meeting started our recording, welcomed everybody. And because we knew we had guests on, we, we played one of the two minute FFI videos. And then Chris and Julie, they, they were talking about the Bavarian hiking one. They did like a one and a half minute summary because they've been members almost 30 years of what Friendship Force has done for them, how they've enjoyed it, personal benefits. It was great. It's the perfect way to do it. So um, this, this Sunday, when we do our, our meeting, we also have a, you know, it, it's a different video because we're going to rotate the through videos and then briefly talk about basically membership has its benefits. So we're trying to spread the word about both organizations we're trying to build that circle of influence because we just know we are better together.